Hi folks, Nick here recapping the day, June 3rd. Uh, Green Day across the board, um, Dow up 0.35%, uh, SPX up 02 so is the NASDAQ. Small caps up big, uh, 1%. And I told you that's where the battle lies. Uh, however, it was a little disappointing to see the run-ups uh, fade this morning. You know, 2120 was the highest in, in the ES. Those are the E-minis, S&P minis. Um, first of all, great news because they rejected a huge downside, but uh, bad news because that downside came from a huge upside. <laughs> so you can see pre-open, everybody was exuberant, and then everybody slid down at the open, and then we recovered and ran off to new highs. Then we gave it all back up. Then we ran up to couldn't match the highs and gave most of it up. Anyway, with minutes to go, we had the potential to break down from this neckline right there. And it all depended on Apple, which was a stinker today. It closed barely up, but it was really saved by the bell. A few more minutes, and Apple would have been in the 29s for sure. Uh, this is the NASDAQ, same price action. You can see this was an inverse cup and handle that would have been bearish and lost probably another 10 points lower, also saved by the bell. What wasn't saved by the bell were the small caps, and here they are. This is the uh, the minis on the small caps. You can tell, yes, uh, in the pre-open, they were a little hesitant, but they they did not hesitate all day. So tomorrow I expect uh, follow-through, and uh, but I do want to see the open interest. That's my most important thing. So my focus points have been, remember, I had three or four of them, uh, small caps was uh, number one until currencies jumped up. So now the currencies fall behind the small caps, and that's what I want to see, how they're trading this range. And that's what I want to see until tomorrow, uh, how the trade today affected the uh, psyche uh, and the positions in the options market. Okay, so what does that do to our ranges? Let's go check them out right now. Uh, here's the LWM we were talking about. Let me zoom in to six months uh, to see the candles better. Oh, there we go. I told you we have triangles or whatever you can interpret them bullish bearish different people turn them differently I see this as a breakout see that I did a you know a video on it today the green line shows a, a drop and a recovery so it has potential plus the scandal is approaching these two highs and it's battling this this line right here so if I wanted to draw a new line I can add a new line not that I need one but here we go this is a recent failure. See these two, three times, this one, this one, this one, this one, if I can draw it like that. So how about we see a, we see it prove itself right here somewhere, okay? I'll leave that temporary right there. Okay, so this is the IWM. Today's uh, volume was better than yesterday, so legit move. I can't poo-poo it at all. The S&P, SPY, another doji. Look, I can hide my cursor behind it. Doji is indecision. However, this one looks good, but it didn't break this one emphatically, this descending line. So it's still iffy, but it's a good start. It's a good start. So two indecisive days, three indecisive days, four in the last five, uh, indecision all over the place. So um, will this be another candle up here or another candle down here? Okay. So, um, but the good news is that the iron condors I suggested a couple of days ago in the last couple of days, they all paid out. They're all total winners. 80% um, of maximum gains are paid out. If you did the SPY or the SPX, and I got a lot of uh, messages saying, you know, booked profits, thank you, booked profits, thank you. I love reading that. Decent volume. How about the Qs? The Qs are the NASDAQ, since it changes. There we go. Um, Remember those two green things? I'm telling you, it's tightening. This is also indecisive, kind of a doji, uh, green. But now we're back into this. So something's going to happen here, either break down again or break out to the white. Um, direction unknown. I really don't care. I'm not shorting anything that tightly. If I am, I should be listening to myself saying, this is headline. We can't short headlines too closely. We can't go long headlines too closely. We're going to get hurt. Okay, so this is really important. So here's what the week looks like. Um, let's replace this one, SPY. These are weekly candles. Each candle is one week. S&P, NASDAQ, small caps. So you can see the small caps rising wedge, those two green lines, is breaking down a little bit, tapering, but now it's recovering, and it's approaching the upper end of things. What's it gonna do? Okay, bullish candle, red, Red. So the week is still looking red for the main indices. Got two days to go. And it's green for the small caps thanks to today. All right. So back to uh, what I expect is um, 
first of all, today we had a lot of movements, and it's mostly Draghi. Um, I told you earlier uh, what I think of Draghi. He's got a whipped tongue, meaning he moves markets, and it's almost always up. And guess what? We ran up. He spoke this morning. I listened live, and I told you about what I heard from him. Uh, but it was funny to see to hear him say, recovery is on track, but expected stronger. So I think he meant to say, recovery is within range, however, on the lower end of our expectation of the range. Uh, otherwise, he told us they threw their money away. And then he follows up by saying, we will do even more if need be. So somebody in the question ask, uh, in the question section asked, what do you mean by that? Or what could you do? And he said, well, well, you know, he starts backtracking and he says, um, which is important, basically he said, even though uh, the the recovery is less than what he expected, so basically not working very well, he would, if necessary, add to that. Uh, that's what he said. If necessary, we will add to that. That's exactly what he said. So he was kind of backtracked by saying, um, if we need it, and if there were other factors, and if the downside risk grows, um, and uh, then we would consider size, comma, timing, and design of the QE that they're running there. But so far, that's what he said, we see no reason to do that. So he totally backtracked on that, totally. So again, a sharp tongue doesn't always um, mean that you know things are going to the moon. So uh, the bottom line is the EQE is working. They asked him about pulling the trigger for earlier. Anyway, it's just he's foot is on you know stepping on the pedal all the way down to the mat, and he's not going to back. He's not going to stop it anytime soon. All right. So what does that leave us with? It leaves us with us trading our own uh, thesis in ranges and leaving room for headlines because they are coming fierce, uh, fast and furious, I should say. So what I would uh, look at, just stick to uh, avoiding the weekly plays uh, within the current week because that's where everything blows up in a bad way. And uh, book profits often, and don't overstay your welcome in a trade. Speaking of trading, I looked at a few names today based on some questions and some personal. Uh, Amazon was in the news today. Um, uh, Piper Jeffrey, I believe, upgraded it to $520 uh, price. Uh, it was up $1.30. If, if this was Tesla or Netflix, it would have been up more. So the fact that it was only up $1.30 on a strong market day with strong sentiment day tells me that maybe it doesn't have an art, the bulls are tired. On the plus side, this looks like a breakout. From If I extend this orange line, it will come to here, and this is a breakout. So maybe... Maybe just maybe it wants to go higher. That's you know Amazon. Um, also looked at AXP. Somebody asked about it, which is American Express. And let me zoom out to I believe two years will get us there. There we go. Uh, this is the third assault or so on this recent lid. So maybe if it breaks this recent lid right here, we'll get to this bubble, which may lead to this bubble. However, when we get to this bubble, this is an area of failure. It did trade a long time up here, but this is from where it got spit out hard. They hated it right here because of the Costco connection fell apart. So chasing it, maybe, waiting another candle might be better. Uh, as soon as I see confirmation that it's breaking out to here, maybe I try to trade up to here and maybe a trade up to here, but I wouldn't follow it any further. Uh, so meaning I'm, I'm telling it, show me the money, okay? Show me the money. And uh, Morgan Stanley, MS. All banks are up today. Why? We'll get to that. Rates ripped higher. So, and that's really important. And I told you that could, it is a possibility. Uh, the fact that sometimes the banks running may be bad for markets because they're running based on a ripping rates. So here's the one year. So up to here is a potential breakout. I'm not following it because this is from where it fell apart last time and it looks like it rejected it today. So why not wait another candle? And if it does break out of the green, this should be the target easy, which is the you know, arbitrary line I drew up here. Uh, if not, it may retrace to here. And if it does, it may retrace to here. So all possibilities, I'm not playing any which way or another. 
AT&T was also discussed. Almost the same story there. Very bullish price action recently. Higher lows knocking on roof. If the roof breaks, this is the upside target. So it may shoot to 36 plus. I'm not playing it. That's not my style of how I do things. Somebody asked about Gilead as well. Um, Gilead hit my target exactly. I drew this bubble a while back and I also drew it from here so it hit my target from two different angles and it coincides with a recent high. So the, the question you ask yourself is, okay, it may have a couple more bucks but what's it going to do at this orange line? Is it going to break out? If it does, then it may reach up to here. I'm not so optimistic but this is biotech slash healthcare. You know, headlines can take it up there. I'm, I don't know. I'm not an, it's not my game. I won't go along it with my money. I'm not comfortable to do a credit put spread either, which is also long. Uh, Boeing, it's still trying to break out. It's avoided the major mess. I told you this red zone, um, major mess, but it bounced exactly where it needed right here. Three good candles. This candle is called a rickshaw. It's basically a perfect doji um, and with long tails. So complete indecision and look where it happened. Okay. So every time it hit here, it failed. It hit here. Is it going to fail again? If it fails again, it better hold at the red or this is going to get erased. So I think that um, the next move is either reaching for this bubble or this one, and this one could be disastrous. By that, I mean it could retrace down to here. It's not a major disaster. Twelve months ago, look at the range it played. And then suddenly they stepped up. Maybe they're pricing that step up back out of it. Uh, Disney, I think, was mentioned also. This might be a leftover from yesterday. No, today. Uh, still trying to break out. I still don't want to chase it because it's still failing right here. Today's candle is indecisive. Again, a doji at exactly where it, it can't close above this green line. I need to see it. Great earnings didn't bring it out. So what else is going to bring it out? It needs a headline. All right. Back to the rates situation. It's important. Why? This is a legitimate breakout. Now, I've had this target for a while, right? I even drew this bubble and line from a while back. I don't remember when. Um, and I told you that, see this orange line right here and this orange right there? That's the eventual target. So this candle may be headed to that, which is up here, 24 and a half. It's 23.66. That's a legitimate breakout above the green. And this would be the ideal target for it somewhere around here. But now, this form looks like a cup and handle, right? Even though this is like a steep thing. But this should bring about 26-ish. So guess what, folks? Rates are going up based on this chart. This, is, this has been resistance for a long, long time. It just said, fully in your face, I'm leaving you behind. So today's markets completely ignored higher rates. How long can they do that? If they break out to levels they haven't seen in months, will they still be as brave? I'm not so sure. Uh, the inverse of it is the uh, TLT, which represent the bonds. Complete breakdown today. That's Look at these three candles. Boom, boom, boom. This area must hold. This has been a target for us for a while. So this is, I can see it coming to here, but this area must hold because of look of what it represents. Resistance, breakout, tick, 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 breakout, boing, support. So it needs to provide support. Otherwise, um, I can see some, like, here. And the bond market is huge. And they say it's smarter than the stock market. Guess what? It's just massive. And if it moves this drastically, you can rest assured there will be repercussions throughout everything. I'm not so sure markets will take that with a grain of salt or as easy as they did today. This crashes, rates rocket. That relationship is going to hold up. What is un, uh, unknown is if um, rates rise, will the markets falter? Will the markets be brave enough to look at rates going through the roof and not, not fall? I think they can for a little bit, but I don't think they can for a lot of it. If they break this blue line, they're going to start asking questions. Oh, geez, what's going on, right? That's two years. So um, be cautious with the major setups. Leave room for error because nobody knows what we're doing. Uh, nobody knows what's coming, I should say. Okay. So how do I play this? 
if I think that this is going to end up here, I would want to buy call spreads here or calls. And I would want to also buy puts here because if this one falls, the other one climbs. If the other one climbs, this one falls. So doing both will be going, taking that position in a big way. And that is a way to make money off of that. This is an important uh, point because today the market's ignored it. How long will the markets be this brave? All right, Nick signing out uh, 15 minutes on the money.